Great. There we go. I see the, the icon is now lit. So um, now we're recording. And, and thanks for uh, the introduction, Augie, and thanks for the, the pat on the back to, uh, to my bureau within the health department. Hi, everyone. Good morning. My name is Stephen Kane. I'm the assistant chief of the Bureau of Public Health Protection in Suffolk County. Um, my goal here today is to provide, provide everyone with um, some detailed information um, that, that is applicable to um, getting a food truck business started in Suffolk County from the requirement aspect of the, the health department. So let's just dive right in here. Could I have the next slide? Great. So um, everyone um, has an idea of what the health department does. And the reason that one, one of the reasons that the, the health department does regulate food trucks and food establishments in general is specifically to prevent foodborne illness. That is the main mission of the um, Bureau of Public Health Protection and the health department. Next slide, please. So what is a food truck? What are we talking about here? And I think everyone has a pretty decent idea what a food truck is. Um, so, you know, specifically a food truck is a mobile food establishment. Obviously it's on wheels, it's mobile. Um, the other major portion of our, our part of the definition is that it has limited preparation and handling. So um, keeping it simple on a food truck where you have a generally limited supply of water and a limited ability to handle wastewater because of the confines of the truck. You're not connected generally to um, um, uh, unlimited supply of water or an unlimited wastewater supply. Keeping it simple, keeping the food service limited is the key for a food truck. All food trucks generally operate in conjunction with an approved commissary, which is basically a resupply point, and we'll talk a little bit about that in a moment. And almost every type of food truck, and there are different kinds, require written health department review and approval before operating. And so that process is what I'm going to review with everyone here today. Next slide, please. So basically, we want to make sure that everyone who has any interest in purchasing or building or getting a food truck operational and on the road and being part of your business is to make sure before you expend a great deal of, of capital or resources or sign any contractual obligations that you do your homework and make sure that it can meet Suffolk County Health Department requirements. Most trucks are able to meet health department requirements for the purposes that they're built, but there are some uh, slight differences between, say, states or other jurisdictions where a truck may have been operating before that might need a modification to meet a Suffolk County code requirement that's going to cost an additional um, amount of uh, capital for you. So we just want to make sure that you have uh, as much information at your disposal before you start to make some big financial decisions. Uh, next slide, please. So there are different types of food trucks and the different categories of food trucks are based largely on the menu. And I think everyone's fairly familiar with the different types of trucks that are out there, push carts and coffee trucks that go around to business and some sell sandwiches and prepackaged foods and frozen dessert trucks and mobile dining vehicles, the kind of trucks that you would see at carnivals and festivals and even dinner cruise vessels. And there are, um, there's like one or two that are still permitted in Suffolk County. They're not very common anymore. They used to be a little more common. Um, one type of truck that is not on here, as you can see, is a, 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 a frozen dessert truck of a kind, but not one like, uh, to use a brand name, Mr. Softy. So our food trucks require permitting if there's any kind of food handling or preparation on the truck that would involve swirling a cone of your favorite soft serve dessert. It does not include the truck that simply sells prepackaged good humor type treats. So there's a distinction to be made between the types of food trucks that would and would not require a permit, but almost all types of food trucks that you can think of that you've seen or have or that you see around the county um, do require a permit from the health department. Next slide, please. So again, given that there are different types of food trucks, we have uh, codified or described in great detail the uh, standards for each of the types of food trucks. And you can see on the bottom of this screenshot here that um, these uh, PDF files are located on our website. And you can see the, um, the actual address above suffolkcountyny.gov and then it's online forms and you can drill down to the health department's act, uh, area of the, uh, the website for online forms. And each of these files will give you a very specific 
uh, indication and detail on exactly what a food truck is in that category and what's required for it. Next slide, please. Okay, so there is a permit and review process, um, which generally requires that a, uh, an application, um, a number of applications and forms, depending on the type of truck is submitted. Um, our um, policy and procedure is to review any plan that is submitted to us within five days. That's our, our goal, and we have exceeded that goal um, for, for many years. Generally, our average is um, between two and two and a half days to review a plan or any plan that comes into our office and turn that around and send it back to you for resubmission if there are deficiencies. So you can see that um, if the plan is, has everything that's needed, then the plans are approved within five days. Um, if there are deficiencies or there's missing information, and I'll tell you what kind of the common mistakes are in a moment, um, then basically we invite you to create uh, an office or make an office conference meeting with our, our plan reviewers, and they would, will gladly be there to assist you um, to make sure that uh, the next time that a, a plan submitted, it's got everything that it needs. Once the plans are approved, um, it's then basically the approval is to construct uh, the vehicle according to the plan. After that is completed, you would bring the vehicle to our offices here in Yapank. Uh, we would inspect the vehicle, conduct a pre-operational inspection, and issue the permit. Um, and just so everyone knows, during um, the past um, difficult months, uh, as we're all you know dealing with the COVID pandemic, we do and have been continuing to review plans for all food establishments, including food trucks, and we've um, conducted pre-operational inspections virtually. So the whole process is continuing. Um, while we're all figuring out how we can move uh, move forward. So um, next slide, please. Um, just some information about the fact that plans may not be required for certain vehicles if the vehicle has previously held the permit to operate in Suffolk County. So if you're purchasing a vehicle um, and you're not making any changes to it or any changes you're making are very minimal, um, cosmetic changes, branding it yourself, or wrapping or doing whatever you need to do, um, plans may not be required. Uh, applications would be required simply so we know who you are and that you, you have, we have all the information about you and your menu. Um, certainly a permit fee must be paid, but the, uh, the truck still needs to be inspected and you, uh, and once you own it. Um, and then it, it's a, it's it basically a streamlined or it's a much simpler process. If you have a, a, a vehicle that has had a permit already within Suffolk County in the previous two years. Next slide, please. So, once you have the applications and forms, um, you'd identify the vehicle type that you are looking to apply for, um, request the application package, complete all your forms and to get copies of all the required documents. Um, we need uh, copies of plans. You submit those plans to us. Next slide, please. And uh, one of, the, informa one of the, the, the questions that we get a lot is, what is a commissary? What do I have to do for, uh, to be a commissary or where can I find a commissary? So commissary basically is nothing more than just a food establishment or any facility that's licensed or permitted by Suffolk County Health Department or another agency such as New York State Department of Agriculture and Markets um, where food trucks are resupplied. And by resupplied, they can be cleaned, they're supplied with fresh water, um, food, uh, single service items, disposal of wastewater, any number of different functions that kind of act as the support for a food truck. And these commissary functions may be provided at multiple locations. Perhaps you have a, uh, a, a food facility that you are preparing your food in to supply and restock the, uh, the food truck and you might get your water there. But you might also then have a contract to uh, pump out your wastewater from some other company. Well, if that's, they're basically both then commissaries, but the commissary is the broad general, uh, generalized term for um, all of the support functions that are required for any food truck, basically. Next slide, please. So these are just simple plan drawings, sample plan drawings that you can see that these are, and these are actual drawings. They're, they're not fancy. They can be done by anyone who um, has a ruler and a pencil, basically. Um, they can be done uh, by, uh, by design professionals. That certainly is, a, is an option. Um, but they can also um, be done um, in, a, in a homegrown sense. And, um, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't take a lot, but you basically are showing us exactly from a top-down view what equipment you have in the um, in the, in the truck, where's the wastewater going? How is it drained? Um, how does it look on the outside? Um, 
It's all, again, driven by menu. That's one of the most important things because the menu that you're serving is going to determine what equipment that you need to have on the vehicle in order to provide food service safely. Next slide, please. So I promised that I'd give you some information about the most common plan deficiencies. And one of the top items that we see when we get our application forms is that there is no menu submitted. And that unfortunately is about the most important thing. I mean, certainly we need to know who you are and what about your truck and everything else on it. But if we don't know what kind of food you're, you plan to serve on your food truck, then it's very difficult, if not impossible, to determine exactly what equipment you need and how much of that equipment that you need. Uh, many times we receive incomplete forms or applications and we have those lines on those forms for a reason, folks. We do need to have all that information from you. Um, plans also sometimes are drawn incorrectly. Or they're not to scale. Not all of the equipment is shown. I mean, it may be that you have all the equipment you need, but it's just simply not drawn on the plan for us to actually review. Remember, it's a paper review first. Then once it's approved on paper, then we compare the paper uh, plan as it is approved to the vehicle. Um, and again, um, a part of doing your homework, if you are unsure if you have uh, the equipment or the ability to, to meet the requirements uh, to be a specific kind of food truck, then we uh, encourage that you schedule a meeting with our plan reviewers, um, either before or during the process. And um, this is very, very frequent. We do this all the time. And um, it's very, very helpful for everyone to, um, to schedule a meeting with the reviewer and really get into the details of exactly what's required for their truck. Next slide, please. So once you've received approval for the plans, you can construct, build it, modify the truck, purchase it according to the approved plans. Sometimes some of these trucks are built out of state, so you would get your approved plan from the health department here, provide those approved plans to your fabricator, and he could build it to spec. Um, after that's completed, you're making sure all the equipment is working properly, especially the refrigeration. Recommend that when you have a pre-operational inspection, you get that refrigeration, especially working a few hours before you get to the health department. Because if it's a nice hot summer day and you come here to get an inspection and you turn your, com your, your generator on or compressors to start the refrigeration as soon as you get here, um, it's gonna take a little while to get that refrigeration down to temp. And we do need to see the refrigeration functional at the temperature that it's, it needs to be to uh, keep food sit cold and safe, which is 41 degrees Fahrenheit. So we conduct uh, pre-operational inspections on trucks every day of the week, Monday through Friday at our offices here in Yapping. Uh, next slide, please. Um, something that's required of um, every type of food truck, except for a coffee truck, um, California type truck, which are basically there's no food handling that goes on in those vehicles. Um, we require a food handler training certificate for um, the person in charge of the operation. So if you have two or three employees that alternate sh shifts on a truck or you yourself own the truck, we recommend that, um, that you get a, a food safety certificate that can be either from the Suffolk County Department of Health Services, who um, we've, we have our own class and we've trained hundreds of thousands of people over uh, the last uh, 30 to 40 years or so. Um, most of the, uh, the food uh, trucks require a certificate that is a, what we call the, 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 the food manager certificate is a 10-hour class or an online class. There, we have an app that has this, the, the, the food manager class on it. Um, so you would take the class online. You would test here at our location in, um, in Yapank. It's about a one-hour test. And the recertification of that certificate is required every three years. Um, here's a link. Um, obviously, uh, it, this uh, is... is posted on our website all the information on the food manager course. You can do this course at the same time or concurrently while your food truck is being reviewed. So um, this might also be something that you simply have because you um, have been in the industry and you are aware that uh, not only Suffolk County, but uh, most um, agencies or jurisdictions require some type of food safety training. The same goes for food trucks as well. Uh, next slide, please. So, um, it's very important to understand that based on the type of truck that you have and the menu that you have and what you're doing on that truck, it, it, the Suffolk County Department of Health Services permits the ability to sell food from that truck and not the location where that food is sold in almost all circumstances. So roadside peddling, 
storage of vehicles, parking, these are determined by towns and villages, not the health department. Um, so unless it is a type of a vehicle that is used with a, what we call a temporary event with food service, such as a fair or a feast or a carnival, which are generally issued permits on a per event basis um, at a specific location for a limited period of time, um, the permit from the health department basically gives you the permit to uh, serve food from the vehicle. The actual location of the food service, where that takes place, that's handled at the town level. Um, road uh, parking uh, generally also uh, either from towns and villages or perhaps the county highway department, um, could be state highway department, depending on who has uh, uh, responsibility for maintaining the road. So some um, types of trucks also operate with uh, routes and territories that are predefined and specifically frozen dessert trucks or coffee trucks. Um, as you see, they kind of go to uh, specific kind of protected locations. So um, each type of truck has its own um, kind of idiosyncrasies as far as where they can sell the food and how um, those, those areas are, are divided up. Uh, so at this point, um, I've pretty much summarized uh, in about 15 minutes how you obtain a permit to uh, sell food uh, from a food truck and get a permit for your food truck in Suffolk County. I know we're going to have plenty of time for, our, for questions um, at the conclusion of the presentation. So I'd like to turn it over now to Julianne Navarra. Thank you so much, Steve. Hello, everyone. Uh, we're so happy to have you on the webinar today. My name is Julianne Navarra. I'm a Community Development and Planning Specialist with Suffolk County Department of Economic Development and Planning. Um, we are, in this slide, we're going to discuss food truck operations during COVID and where they mostly been. As our Commissioner Natalie Wright and Augie has mentioned, uh, this is a time for the food truck industry to flourish in a creative way uh, because a lot of things have changed in our everyday lives. This is a new opportunity for the industry uh, to develop in particular areas as well as travel throughout Suffolk County. So uh, me, we're mostly seeing them at hospitals, community centers, parks, pools, and parking lots of essential businesses that are still in operation. Um, you know, as citizens of Suffolk County, I'm sure you've seen uh, food trucks before COVID in these particular areas, but um, these are the areas where they're located mostly right now. So next slide. All right, as Steve has mentioned before, there are particular types of food trucks. Mostly in Suffolk County, there's a particular breakdown of the kind of food trucks. So you have 12% of, of coffee trucks in the market, 13% are hot dog trucks, 21% uh, is frozen dessert truck, think Mr. Frosty, ice cream, and then mobile fast food is 54% of the market, which is made up of all different types of cuisines. Um, and that is making up a majority of food truck operations. Now, the next slide we go to is going to be a breakdown of the mobile fast food trucks, as you can see here. Um, so sweet and savory is 20%. When you think sweet and savory, I want you to think crepes, waffles, baked goods, things like that. We're gonna look at 11% at gourmet food trucks. When you hear gourmet, I want you to think farm to table, seasonal food, grass fed, organic. Uh, their menus change often because they're using particular foods based on the season. We'll come down to the green, which is 16% of the market. This is Mexican food, Spanish food. Uh, think tacos, nachos, burritos, empanadas, enchiladas. And then we'll go to American, that's 43%. Clearly this takes up a majority. Um, it is quite broad when we speak of American because there's so many things, but burgers, hot dogs, sandwiches, barbecue, cheese steaks, et cetera. You see Asian at 5%. I want you to think Korean barbecue, buns, ramen, uh, ramen of any kind, or rolls. And then Mediterranean and Italian, we're going to think gyros, sovlaki, sausage and peppers, and pizza. So we broke this market down for you to understand, um, you know, where there might be a need when it comes to food trucks throughout Suffolk County. If you have amazing Italian recipes passed down for generations and you're looking to start a business, 
with only 5% of Italian food trucks out there, it might be a fun market to jump into and see what you could what you could do. So as we mentioned before, this is a very creative time. It's an exciting time to open up a new business. Um, so this is definitely, uh, you know, we're definitely excited for this endeavor. Um, you can go to the next slide, please. Okay, as Steve mentioned before, we were we are providing you a breakdown of uh, phone numbers and contacts at each town. Suffolk County is made up of 10 towns, Islip, Babylon, Brookhaven, Huntington, East Hampton, Riverhead, Shelter Island, Smithtown, Southampton, and South. I went ahead and contact each town and figured out which department would be the best department to contact when it came to a citizen wanting to open up a food truck business. Now we have to remember that each town is different. So the town code of Islip of where a food truck may operate may be different than Riverhead. So I can't, I'm not going to give you specific examples, but just a general example is Islip might say, we only, we can only stay at one location for 15 minutes at a time. But Riverhead may say, you cannot move, you need to stay in that one location all day long. So it really depends on where you would like to operate your food truck. It depends on what towns you would like to combine if you wanna stay in one town. It's really up to you. Um, and that's where the creative aspect comes in as, long, uh, as well as you know building your truck and the colors you use and all that fun stuff. So go to the next slide, please. Now I went ahead and also broke down the villages for you. So those are the 10 towns. Here we have about 31 contacts for you. So um, they're broken down by town. So the town of Islip, you can see there's four different villages, town of Babylon, three, and et cetera. Since I called every single number to make sure these were the correct contacts for you to reach out to, as you can see, I grade some of those out. These are the villages that verbally confirm that they do not have food trucks within their village, mostly because they're very residential town, so there's no type of events or anything like that where they would really want a food truck parked. Now, I don't want to discourage you from calling these villages yourself. Um, if you want to call to confirm, you you definitely can, but who knows, they might throw a block party and want to hire a food truck. So it's important for you to stay up on social media, check out what the towns are doing, check out what the villages are doing, and it might be a nice opportunity for you to showcase your food truck and what you have to offer. Okay, next slide. Actually, Julianne, I, I want to jump sure. in there as, yeah. a, uh, as a good exception to the rule. So I see you have Patchogue grayed out, uh, but Patchogue does allow food trucks for things like a live after five um, right. or things that are hosted, say, at Blue Point Brewery, you know, which is a private business and so on. So I, I think I really appreciate the legwork you did here. And I think it is valuable to include all the information, even if, you know, they express you verbally that, you know, they, they don't kind of permit. There are obviously exceptions. And Correct. I mean, look, look at Lake Grove right now, right? I mean, with malls being closed, I could see see them uh, taking an entirely different stance on whether or not they want to do like a food truck rally or something like that, the Smith Haven Mall, for example. So I think those, that's a good point. Absolutely. Yeah. Again, like we said, don't, don't be discouraged just because it looks great out. You should stay up on their opportunities. And with COVID happening, um, you know, there might be an opportunity where people want to social distance, socially distance. So they bring food trucks in because it's easier to wait in line and socially distance. So there are a lot of opportunities in the market right now. And so on this slide, where can I operate? Um, pretty exciting information from the New York State Parks. Uh, they would, they asked us to provide this information for you. Uh, so they are interested in new food trucks setting up at their state park locations throughout Suffolk County. Belmont Lake State Park, West Babylon, Brentwood State Park in Brentwood, Heckscher State Park in East Islip, Hempstead Lake State Park in Hempstead, Hollock State Park in Riverhead, Orient Beach State Park in Orient, and Valley Stream State Park in Valley Stream. So this is an opportunity where the state wants food trucks to 
come in. So it's a very exciting time. And again, this is uh, for social distancing reasons. Uh, this is to kind of evolve in the market and rebrand ourselves. So it's an exciting time to jump in and really begin your business. And I, I'm excited you're all here. And uh, I'm gonna pass this on to Augie to finish up the PowerPoint and thanks again. Great, thanks, Julianne. Um, so I will reiterate, uh, most of the questions we're getting in the comment box right now are, will these be available afterwards? Absolutely, they will be. Uh, we will have them posted on Economic Development and Planning's webpage, also Department of Health Services webpage, but we'll email a link to all of our registrants. So uh, I think you'll find uh, when following up that a lot of this contact information, I'm sure you didn't have a chance to write down all those phone numbers, we will be making available to everyone. So, uh, so I promise you that will be be forthcoming after the webinar is over. Um, so how much does it cost to start a, a, a food truck? Um, I wish I had a more specific answer for you. Um, this is from the uh, National Food Truck Associations. I kind of stole a lot of the information and research they did, uh, but ultimately every food truck business is different. Uh, so it's really important that you get quotes from every truck manufacturer, renter, commissary, and truck wrapping company that you could find. Um, and make sure you contact our Department of Health Services uh, and also the Town of Operation to understand those local regulatory requirements. So that's gonna be important and we, and we have covered a lot of that. Um, so I found a builder to build my food truck. Is there anything I should require? Um, make sure your food truck builder understands the requirements of the food codes in your region. Uh, create a contract that ensures that if there are mistakes and the truck does not pass the health department inspection that the builder is responsible. Um, if the food truck builder has a deadline, make sure there are financial pe penalties if the builder does not meet the deadline. Uh, so these, again, are all recommendations directly from the National Food Truck Association. Um, and you may want to ask other food trucks if they're willing to, if they had good or bad experiences with other builders, uh, to, to talk with those vendors and see, you know, what are the, the beneficial uh, experience they had, what are the uh, requirements they should have addressed beforehand. I think speaking to other food truck operators uh, is a very valuable experience that I would recommend. Um, there are some business resources out there. Um, this is an update, again, from food trucks nationwide. Um, there is, you know, capital to cover the cost of retaining employees. Many of you, if you're in the restaurant business, may already be familiar with the pay Paycheck Protection Program. Uh, as we know, a, the vast majority of those funds must be spent on employees. But that to me is fine. There's nothing to preclude you or preempt you from using PPP funding uh, on to pay employees to man a food truck. Uh, I mean, whether it's in a restaurant or a food truck, I do not believe PPP makes a distinction. They just want to see people employed. Um, so I think that's a good funding source. They, I believe, just extended that deadline by another five weeks. So there's still funding available in that program. Um, if you're looking for an infusion of smaller amount of cash, uh, you might want to look into the emergency economic injury grant. Um, there's counseling services going through all this. If you're an established business, then the resource partners might be your best bet. Um, best Food Trucks is a mobile online ordering and marketing platform for use uh, by food truck operations. You could use the platform to set up custom locations, accept online orders. Uh, there's also access to a few marketing tools. I believe uh, they're offering these, I think normally it's a pay for service, but they're currently offering with a few other features and customization abilities for free, uh, just because of the, the ongoing circumstances. So you could take a look at that as well. I think it's another valuable resource. Uh, the New York Forward Loan Fund uh, is a loan fund supporting New York State small businesses, nonprofits, and small landlords as they reopen after COVID. Um, it targets small businesses with 20 or fewer full-time employees. Um, small businesses can apply for a loan in the amount of the lesser of $100,000 or up to 100% of the average monthly le revenues in any three month period. Again, some of this is gonna be catered to existing businesses, not necessarily startups, but I believe you know there's a lot of good information out there available for both types of operations. Um, but again, you know, businesses looking to pivot during this period, there are resources out there working in capital loans uh, that are intentionally been designed to support businesses through these kind of different difficult and challenging periods. Um, here is a business resource that I think, uh, you know, 
once again, bringing up this idea of creativity and, and how do we evolve in a new market. Uh, PSE and G are actually offering these special grants uh, to, a chamber, to chambers of commerce and business improvement districts. So you might say to yourself, well, how does that help me? Well, I think it helps you because if you can get in, into contact with your local chamber or a chamber you want to uh, you know, operate in or a business improvement district, how do we create more opportunities and spaces for which food trucks can operate? How can we accommodate outdoor seating, picnic tables, and that sort of thing for food trucks? Uh, how do we enforce proper safety protocols and social distancing? Uh, is it lighting? Is it cordoning off? Is it barricades? Um, there, are, I think, are creative ways to look at your target community or target you know, business spaces where you could do these kind of complementary type of uh, designs and reorientations of our traditional dining environments and figure out a way to accommodate your food truck operation. So again, you would, the chamber would need to be the applicant or the business improvement district. But again, it is a resource out there to kind of recreate the spaces uh, that we've grown accustomed to. So I will end there. Um, this is the contact information for the Bureau of Public Health and Protection. I I'm going to flip through this slide really quickly, but again, it will be included in all follow-up materials. There's different phone numbers for, you know, in general, for the food truck plan review, for food manager training. Uh, there's a food protection program website uh, with, as all Suffolk County websites are very clunky, but nevertheless, uh, it is available. Again, this will be provided in follow-up materials. Um, here are the contacts of your three speakers today. Uh, again, uh, my name is Augie Ruchtischel. I work in economic development and planning. Julianne Navarra works with me in economic development and planning. And then Stephen Kane is the principal public health sanitarian uh, at the Department of Health Services. And um, now I will scroll through, if you, if you may allow me, I'm going to try to go through the questions that we have and pull out the ones that I think uh, will be most helpful. So, uh, so I do see, will your presentation be emailed after the call? Yes, it will be. Um, I was not recording the opening uh, comments, but the most important parts have been recorded, that being Steve's uh, presentation of the permitting requirements. Um, let's see. Steve, I'm not sure if we can answer this or if this is too specific, but how do you calculate the hot water needs of a food truck to ensure we install the proper hot water heater? Is that yeah. something? Okay. Well, that's not too specific, Ben. Okay. It can be answered relatively simply and quickly. Um, the requirements for, for hot water and for the size of the freshwater tank in general is dependent upon the size and amount of equipment that uses it. So as a calculation that's done, it's during the plan review process. When you submit your plans, um, we provide you with the information that uh, you, know, you put into a spreadsheet, um, a formula, or a, um, you, know, you tell us how, how, how big is your three compartment sink? How, big, uh, how many hand wash sinks do you have? Uh, what are the requirements for fresh water? And then that determines how much uh, fresh water you need to supply and also how much of that needs to be heated by hot water. So that's all determined during the plan review process. Great. I know we covered this, Steve, but I had lots of people join late throughout the, I just admitted someone now. I've heard the process is very long. Is that still the case or ever the case? <laughs> well, you know, that is dependent on the completeness, the thoroughness of, of every plan submission. As I mentioned early on um, during my presentation, our goal is to review every submission within five days, and we've met that goal for many, many years. Uh, our, our average is between two and two and a half days per review. And you know, if there are deficiencies or missing information on the plans, we want to make sure that everyone understands that we're there to assist you through the process. And as I mentioned multiple times, make sure that you contact your reviewer. And uh, we have one specific reviewer who deals with the vehicles more frequently than others uh, here at, at uh, Bureau of Public Health Protection. And he is always having meetings, going over every single detail of the plans. And it can um, help to uh, minimize the number of submissions it takes uh, to get your, your review approved and get you on your way to uh, a permit and operation. Great. And as we suspected, Steve, a lot of these questions are going to be for you. Is yep. there a fee for the plan reviewer? 
Yes, the plan review fee. Well, first of all, there's a, a, a permit fee just for your operating permit, um, which is either a one or two year permit fee. It's your choice. Um, generally, most people choose two years. That's $210 for a two year period for operation. Uh, the plan review fee, it's a one time fee. That's $240. And that um, is a single fee. Uh, whether you have one review until you get your final approval or multiple reviews if necessary. Great. When are you going to start offering the food manager safety certifications again? Well, the food safety class, of course, had to be suspended due to COVID requirements. And um, as we're set to enter phase four tomorrow, um, which does include um, higher education anyway, I don't know if you want to call it higher education, but because it is an educational aspect or, or uh, you know, we're putting people in a room, um, we're doing this very carefully. And we're going to initially begin um, within the next few weeks or so by offering the online course test, which again um, is a one hour um, event. It's not a, a 10 hour course over three days. That is gonna be further on down the line, but at least the online version of the course, which anyone can take at any time um, and then schedule a test, we'll be able to open up the scheduling of tests very shortly to start doing those um, uh, within the next couple of weeks. And because there's going to be a pent up demand and because we're going to be focusing more on the online uh, class rather than the in-person class and we have a limited amount of space that we can uh, have in our uh, food manager classroom, uh, we're going to be scheduling m many more testing times and dates than we normally do just to keep up with the demand. Great, thanks Eve. Uh, people like this question, can you serve alcohol? Uh, alcohol is, that's a, uh, it, but the answer to that is it depends. Um, the State Liquor Authority, uh, if you're in the in industry and you're in the business and are understanding how that goes, has so many different kinds of permits for so many different types of operations and circumstances that um, there may be, um, a, it may be permissible, for example, for a vehicle or a truck that is operating in a stationary location at a temporary event like a fair or a feast or a carnival. I'm not sure, but I don't think that if you are a hot dog truck on the side of the road that the SLA wants you serving draft beer along with your hot dog to get back in your car and then drive away. Yeah, and that's that checks with my experiences as well. You know, when I've gone to the temporary events, Green Tour, Greenport Maritime Festival, for example, I know Greenport Harbor Brewery has their kind of fire truck that's been retrofitted to mm -hmm. serve alcohol, but I can't think of any alternate examples of, you know, selling, like you said, with a, with a hot dog, mm -hmm. you know, or something along those lines. So I think that maps with SLA's guidance as well. And in fact, with what some of the comments in the thread kind of have reiterated, actually, Steve, what you said. Mm -hmm. Um, are there caps on the menu types of trucks allowed by a certain county? Uh, for example, a maximum number of dumpling trucks? No. The answer is that that's what the market will, will bear. And yep. uh, so we do not um, cap that number. I mean, they're currently roughly between 220 and 230 um, permitted vehicles operating currently. And that breakdown that Julianne showed before, just simply what it is. And that was to provide you information so that you can make your own determinations about what type of truck to operate. Yeah, I would reiterate that as well. That's, a, that's precisely why we did that analysis and we put it in there. There are no caps. You don't, we don't say you can only have X number of this. Uh, you have to make your own determination about whether or not the market could bear, a, you know, and another entry into that market. Or, uh, you know, maybe you can, maybe you cannot. But we want to provide you with the information and you can make your own kind of uh, risk assessments. Uh, does a hot water heater need to be propane? Uh, no, there. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, it, there are more options that have been uh, provable in the last ten years or so, um, with the the styles of water heaters that have become available, more on-demand water heaters that um, make the options for for providing hot water on a vehicle um, more cost-effective, more efficient, and there are more options than there originally were. So the answer to that is no. Great. Uh, I know the answer to this one, but I'll let you ask, Steve. Must food which is served on a food truck be prepped in a commercial kitchen, or can food be prepped and cooked on the truck? And But maybe, I think we know the answer to that, but maybe you could even talk about the distinction, what requirements uh, would be needed if, it, if all the food was prepped in a commercial kitchen. Right. So... Uh, the reason, again, you know, my very first slide was that we permit uh, uh, food establishments and food trucks to prevent foodborne illness. And we do so to make sure the sanitary controls are in place, whether it's a food truck or a brick and mortar four wall operation. Um, 
the answer to the question is yes, food must be prepared in a permitted location, whether that is a food operation that has a permit from the health department or from a license from the State Department of Agriculture Markets or on the food truck. What we want to um, do with food trucks, since I also describe them as being limited food establishments, is we want to keep it simple. So if you can prepare uh, food in advance to a level where it really needs to be mixed, assembled, heated on the vehicle, that actually makes your life easier as a food operator, a food truck operator as well, because then you're not doing uh, everything that, you know, the, the more steps in food preparation, the more the risk of, of potentially causing uh, foodborne illness. And we, obviously that's something no one wants. Great. I'll take a stab at uh, this next one, Steve, and then maybe you add to if I miss anything. Are there more permanent areas where food trucks gather at this point? Um, I can't think of, candidly, any more uh, pu public areas of a permanent basis. Um, however, it does seem like there are a lot of private businesses and even other restaurant locations where a food truck is kind of permanently located. Um, I think of Flows as an operation, a North Fork Table, a Katie's, which kind of has a kind of food truck permanently gathered on site of the actual operation. Uh, maybe sometimes it goes to mobile destinations. Um, but in the public spaces, uh, and, and you know, I think this is an idea worth exploring moving forward, but I, I can't think of if there are more permanent public spaces beyond getting a kind of agreement with, say, uh, a New York State Parks or so on. Can, am I missing anything, any that you could think of? No, that pretty much covers it. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I'm thinking in, in terms of um, these kinds of, of gatherings, if you will, um, of Long Beach where they, they do have a semi-permanent location for a number of food trucks that I believe are contracted with the, uh, the city of Long Beach to operate by the boardwalk right there. I don't believe that Suffolk County has any areas that are similar to that, but there are um, you know, temporary events where um, we would call them food truck derbies that gather food trucks together um, in, a, in a location for a weekend or for a shorter period of time um, that then you know, are, are permitted for that location for that space and time on a one-by-one -one basis. Um, here's an interesting question. Can you serve CBD infused food? Uh, that uh, currently, whether it's a food truck or a um, or food establishment is not permitted um, by code. Any uh, CBD is not an additive that can be included in any kind of food, whether it's a manufactured food or a prepared food, mean prepared meaning made in a retail food establishment. Uh, so that is not permitted anywhere in New York State. Um, someone on the line, this is a bit specific, but it could apply to more people, um, says food truck is my breadwinner, but my food handling permit has expired. What now? So what we have done because of um, the COVID uh, pandemic is that we have suspended the requirement to renew because obviously we couldn't provide the class. Um, and nor could you find a, a place to test if you took an alternate class as well uh, for the last four months. So we've decided to um, allow anyone whose certificate has lapsed through September 1st to, um, uh, it's a grace period to basically get yourself renewed, um, you know, as we're starting to open up the, uh, the classroom for online course testing and for classroom classes, that's going to be catching up to itself. So there is currently a waiver in place um, that you would eventually be able to, to receive your, or, or obtain a renewal for a food manager certificate. But if you don't have one right now, uh, you know, as long as you demonstrate the knowledge, which hopefully you have and are able to because you have a certificate of taking the class, then there's a waiver in place for you. And what's the fee for that certification class again? Uh, the class is a, it's the online course is $50 and the in-person class, which is 10 hours over uh, a three day period is $75. Okay. Um, okay. We did, we talked, we touched about this, but uh, remind me again, see how many food trucks are working in Suffolk County at present? Uh, roughly 225. Yeah. And then they asked where are most located, where are most located, but I don't think we, we have that data, right? No, I really yeah. don't. Yeah. Um, okay. We got that question. Um, we have we have information showing you know what town they put on their application, but that might be their home address. So where they yeah. operate is a different story. Yes. Yeah, it almost certainly would be. Um, let's see. 
are there places where a food truck can set up outdoor dining chairs or tables? Uh, that's going to be a town or village question. Yes. Um, that, that would be, and, and it's going to change. So you really, uh, you know, Julianne created that slide of, uh, and maybe I'll just throw that up there again real quick. Um, but these are kind of your point of contacts for, to begin to have that, you know, that discussion. Right. If you call that number, um, you know, it, you could ask for the code book of the town. And typically, it's usually under peddlers, um, as Steve was discussing before. Um, but you could ask them any questions you have where, where the code book is and just review the code book and feel free to ask them any questions about the verbiage. Um, next question, do fees vary from truck to truck? I guess we'll talk about Department of Health Services fees because uh, we know there's a variety of different things. All vehicles, all food trucks are the same cost for the permit, $210 for a two-year permit. Okay. If you wanted to do an outdoor movie showing along with your truck, are there any permits which must be looked at or would be fall under the same license and permit? So again, that's going to be a town or village question. Yes. Um, you know, our, our experts online here today are really kind of drawn from what are the, the health permits that you need when you want to do some of those extra things, which I, I, I think are great ideas, by the way, and I, I, I love the thinking behind it, but that is going to probably involve another layer of government. Um, can you get water from your home? I'm not sure entirely what's meant by that question. Steve, is that? Uh, yeah, not exactly. I mean, I know I mentioned that a commissary can be uh, any number of locations, but um, I, I, it depends on the type of vehicle. Uh, the standards are slightly different um, for, for different types of vehicles. Um, as long as the water supply, however, is... Um, you know, meets the standards of the health department, um, which uh, some homes would, some homes would not. It depends. Are you connected to public water? Do you have a private well that requires testing, um, which private wells generally for homes don't require regular testing. So it's, uh, it, there's a lot of, you know, maybes in that, that answer. Okay. Are food handler test results given the same day? So you take the test. When do you find your results? Uh, yes, you actually hand your, your test, which is um, uh, fill in the bubble form as everyone who has taken a standardized test is familiar with uh, to uh, the proctor of the exam who runs it through the test. It's immediately scored. And if you pass, which the great majority of people do, you receive your certificate to walk out the door with. Awesome. Uh, so we, we did have a follow up, uh, said you glossed over it briefly, but didn't quite answer. Can 100% of the food prep be performed on a permitted food truck? Yes. Uh, the answer is yes, um, but again, I, I want to hedge that answer slightly, and maybe that's the reason why it, it was described as not or, or being glossed over. Um, again, you know, each food truck having a very menu-specific um, set of equipment on board, um, and depending on what type of food that you are serving, um, if you're going to roast a brisket for, for 24 hours, um, you're handling raw meat, you're handling cooked meat, um, you know, you got to make sure the sanitary controls are there. So, um, you know, I, again, it, it really would depend. It's very menu specific. Yeah. So I apologize for jumping in there. It could be, yes. <laughs> but it depends on what you're preparing in your menu, yes. which was again, one of your first points that you mentioned, you know, make sure you have a prepared menu that we can approve. Here's a good question. Do you need a bathroom nearby? Um, again, depends on the type of vehicle. If you are a, um, a, a, a coffee truck, if you are a, a Mr. Softy truck, who's, uh, you know, by nature of how it operates are driving around, the answer is no, you do not need to have a bathroom either on the vehicle or nearby. Um, the presumption is that you will be going to a location where you can use the restroom. If you are going to operate a vehicle that is located in one location for any length of time, then yes, you have to have, um, permission to use a bathroom, uh, not a portal lab, but a, a bathroom that's uh, got running water uh, to and, and flush toilets uh, within 300 feet. Great. Um, do you have a list of potential? Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Can I? Do you mind if I interrupt real quick? Sure. Just to, um, I just want to clarify for the permit fee per vehicle. It's actually $210 per year for a food vehicle. Oh, thank you, Chris. Thanks, Chris. Uh, sorry. So, do you have a list of potential commissaries? No, since we do not maintain a list of commissaries, since uh, you know a commissary definition is not you know there's not a 
I, it, it could be really any business that has a license or permit from the health department. So it's up to you to determine based on your location and what your menu is and what you need from a commissary, um, you know, where you're going to obtain the service that you need from them. Right. Uh, what are the requirements to pump out wastewater? Is there a list of companies that do that? Um, again, there's no one list that we maintain, but you know, wastewater management and handling is a, a very large business and uh, you know, Google searches will be able to turn up uh, any number of, of companies that are willing to, uh, to pump out. Can I make my at-home kitchen up to code under the guidelines of the health department to use as a commissary kitchen? If so, where, where would I find the specs to do so? Uh, generally, no. Uh, home prepared food or food prepared in a home kitchen is not um, considered to be a source that's approved for any kind of health department permitting. There are limitations or there are exceptions to that um, given by the New York State Department of Agriculture and Markets for certain home prepared foods that are what are considered to be low risk, such as jams and jellies, um, honeys, certain baked goods, um, you know, prepared nuts, things like that. Great. Um, what are the rules on a food truck in a residential area, like at a private party, not open to the public, but you could, but all you can eat style private party. So like catering, it sounds like. Yeah, that is a specific uh, st uh, type of truck uh, was listed in the, uh, the list of types of trucks before it's called the um, off premises catering vehicle. Um, and, and also could be a, a mobile fast food vehicle again. So um, it, some of these titles of trucks have dual purpose. So, you know, a mobile fast food vehicle or an off premises catering vehicle or a special event truck. These are basically they have the same um, equipment requirements, um, but their definition is more dependent on where they're operating and what they do. And again, it's very important to look at each town and village because everyone has a different cold book and everyone expects different things from food trucks. So if it's a private party in a village that doesn't typically do food trucks, who knows, you might, the person throwing the party might need to obtain some type of permit. So it really sure. is based on per village, per town. Yep. Um, so I feel like we kind of answered this question, but where and how is onboard water um, handled? So gray water from washing. Yeah, so onboard water, meaning uh, wastewater is generally going to be uh, dumped at a, a, an approved location um, or it can be pumped off uh, by a contracted uh, vendor. Um, I'm not sure we'll know the answer to this one. I don't. Where might I find a used coffee truck for purchase? Is there a website with used trucks? I, that I don't know. I don't know either. Julianne? Um, honestly, I would think Craigslist. Something like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I'm afraid you're probably going to need to do your own outreach. You know what, honestly, and I, I mentioned the organization before, and I feel like I'm a member of it, but it's just because I stole so much information from them. It wouldn't surprise me at all if the National Food Truck Association, uh, which is a trade group, um, but they might have listings of, of old trucks there. So that's actually, that strikes me as a potential good starting point. Mm -hmm. Um, will a recording of this webinar be available? Yes, it will be. Um, am I have some people are having a hard time hearing sounds. Um, yeah, maybe if you dial in, though, I'll be honest, we're probably getting towards the end here. Uh, someone else recommended Facebook Market uh, for food truck sales or, or eBay, 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 eBay. Um, Craigslist and Let Go for food trucks. Mm -hmm. so, um, so thank you. Those are all good comments. And I actually, we made it to the end of the questions um, and we had a hundred and 44 people stick with us the entire length of the webinar. So I really hope this was helpful. Um, thank you everyone who, who stuck with us for the entire time. Uh, I, 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 I'm getting some great feedback that's making me, it's really making my Tuesday. So I appreciate it uh, in the comment thread. So thanks again, this everyone. This is exciting. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> I will, as, as I go out, as we go out, I'll just put in, you should feel free to call or email us directly um, again, those are our contact information. We'll have other, again, in the actual webinar, we'll have uh, more direct information about where you need to go to check out requirements and protocols. But uh, thanks again for joining us and have a great day, everybody. Yes, I just want to point out that currently I'm not in the office. That is my office phone number. So if anyone wants to reach out to me, just email me and I'll get back to you.
Okay. All Thanks, right. everyone. Thank you, everyone. Have Thank a great day. Thank you so much. Bye-bye now.